If you're building a PC for video editing, watch this video because I'm going to cover a lot of important things, especially the fact that you need different configurations for different video editing setups. Now, before I start the video, if you have any questions or you just want to talk or argue with me, go ahead and put it in the comments. I'm happy to chat because I'm bored and lonely. And uh, that's the thing I have free time to do. So let's start by talking about this most important point I've raised. You need a different PC configuration depending on the piece depending on the software that you're using. So if you're using Premiere Pro, you're gonna need a different PC build as compared to DaVinci Resolve, for example. Actually, not for example, this is the main two pieces of software that I'm gonna compare about because I'm not talking about high budget Hollywood productions. They don't watch me and come to me for tech advice. I'm targeting you, the general audience who is trying to make videos for YouTube or Twitch or whatever, you know, trying to make content for the internet. For people like you looking to build a video editing rig, this video is gonna help you out a lot, trust. So, the two most popular video editing software is Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve is awesome because you can get so much features for the free version, and Premiere Pro is awesome because it's pretty much just industry standard. So if you're working with someone, chances are the video editing software they know is Premiere. But the thing is, these two softwares are designed so differently that if you were to build a PC for one, it might not be, it definitely won't be optimized for the other. So I'm gonna teach you how to build an optimized PC for DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro. By the way, if you're using video editing software like Avid and Filmora, I think it's called, those are very similar to Premiere Pro in the way it's optimized. So just follow the Premiere Pro guide, easy? Okay, let's start. So the thing about CPUs, which we're gonna start off with, is that it's actually very different for Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve. For Premiere Pro, because it's an older software, it seems to be more focused on single core performance. If you look at benchmarks from websites like Puget Systems, if you look at Linus Tech Tips videos about Premiere Pro performance with different CPUs, it's clear to see that single core performance is as, if not more important than multi-core performance and the number of cores you have in your CPU for Premiere Pro. So this is why I recommend getting a lower core count, higher clock speed, higher single core performance CPU if you're doing Premiere Pro. So for example, if you had the choice between a last gen Ryzen, so a Ryzen 7 2700 and a current gen i5 or a current gen Ryzen 5, like a lower tier Ryzen, but latest gen, I would go for the newer gen Ryzen or I'll go for the Intel. Why? Because it has more single core performance. Intel CPUs have more IPC than the earlier Ryzen's, the 1000 and 2000 series. And the third gen Ryzen has so much more single core performance than last gen Ryzen that you get a lot more performance with less cores and more performance. So, so long as you have a decent number of cores, I recommend at least four cores and eight threads, so a quad core hyper threaded CPU for Premiere Pro, at the very least, if you wanna do good video editing. If you wanna have a pleasant experience, get at least a quad core with hyper threading, but emphasize your budget and focus on spending more money on single core performance heavy CPUs. So Ryzen 3000 series, so Zen 2 architecture, and Intel CPUs. This sounds dumb because Intel CPUs are very limited in upgrade path, they're very limited in many things, but they have still have a couple of advantages, which is mainly single core performance, even at low end and mid range, and the fact that you don't have to buy expensive RAM for them because they're not as reliant on the speed of their RAM to perform well. Okay, now let's talk about the other side of things. Let's talk about DaVinci Resolve. So if you watch videos, or you've seen benchmarks for DaVinci Resolve, you actually find out that for this piece of software, this piece of video editing software, that it's actually really, really good. It's designed completely different to Premiere Pro. It's GPU focus acceleration. So oftentimes you probably be GPU bottlenecked in video editing uh, workloads. To put it into perspective, how GPU bottlenecked you will be in DaVinci Resolve and how GPU focused it is, Hardware Canucks did the review of the Ryzen 3 3300X and they compared it with the Ryzen 7 3700X and with a GTX RTX 2070, I think, all of the render times were exactly the same, which indicated that even though the CPU was much faster, the Ryzen 7 was much faster, the whole process was GPU bottlenecked. So they had the same render times, even though one had a much, much faster CPU. So yes, DaVinci Resolve is heavily GPU focused, heavily GPU accelerated, and you're going to want to get a GPU that's more powerful rather than a CPU that's more powerful. So for a CPU recommendation for DaVinci Resolve, I recommend you get 
a lower core count, a low performance CPU and spend more money on your GPU. What will I recommend then? Well, I still recommend at the very least getting a quad core, but you don't have to worry much about single core performance and you can even afford to go with a lower single core performance higher core count cpu if you wanted more cores for other workloads such as multitasking streaming maybe having 3d modeling and stuff like that if you wanted to do other workloads it's okay to go with less single core performance and more cores such as going with last gen ryzen zen plus architecture that's what i'm talking about with DaVinci Resolve. With DaVinci Resolve, you're not going to be punished much or as much at least for changing to a slower CPU with more cores so that you have more multi-threaded ability. So that is what I recommend for CPUs for DaVinci Resolve. However, I recommend at the very bare minimum, no matter how low you go, you get at least a quad core preferably with hyper-threading if you wanted to edit in DaVinci Resolve. Yes, it is GPU focused and GPU heavy, but at the end of the day, you still want a good overall computer experience. You're building a PC not just for video editing, you're building it for work, you're building it for emails, you're building it for web browsing, you're building it for research. You could be building it for gaming at the same time as video editing as well. So you want a balanced rig overall. So don't just go completely cheap on the CPU, even though it might not affect your render times and your video editing performance at all. For video editing rigs, when it comes to RAM, I think it's very, very easy across the board. For both Premium Pro and DaVinci Resolve, you're going to want as much RAM as you can, but I recommend at the very least get 16 gigs. Yes, if you're doing 1080p, 30fps, 8 gigs you could do with, 12 gigs you can get away with, but Honestly, if you want to have a good experience, and I know a lot of people are doing 1080p 60fps or 2.5k or 4k video nowadays. So if you're doing that, 16 gigs is the bare minimum, especially if you're doing 4k. If you're doing 4k 60, you're going to need to bump that up to 24, if not 32 gigs of RAM at the very least. Because unless you want to have a jittery, stuttery experience, you want to have more RAM. And also having more RAM is very convenient for things like having tabs open in the background while you're video editing, which sounds like something that you shouldn't really care about, but it's very important to think about the fact that if you're doing videos, chances are you'll need to put some research in it, you need to download some stuff in the background so that you can import it and put it into your video. So having the ability and the flexibility to do whatever you want with your computer, very, very important, especially if you're a creative trying to create, right? So RAM, 16 gigs minimum, I think is a general, it's a good general recommendation. Unless you're shooting 8K footage, then it's time to bump that up to 32, if not 64 gigs of RAM. And now let's talk about GPU, which is the second most important part, I think, when it comes to performance. This determines really the render times and you know, the seamlessness of your video editing experience. And of course, if you're not just a video editor and you want to game this video, not that good for you, but GPU is what determines your gaming performance as well. So let's talk about GPUs for Premiere Pro. As I've said before, it's a lot more CPU focused. So it's very, very GPU light. You're going to be more likely CPU bottleneck than GPU bottleneck when it comes to Adobe Premiere Pro. And you honestly don't need to spend that much on GPU because the diminishing returns are real with Premiere Pro GPU acceleration yes it helps to get a faster gpu but at a very low point it actually starts to taper off when it comes to the gains for spending more on your gpu so to put it into perspective from what i know seeing benchmarks on puget systems going from a gtx 1070 to a gtx 1080 ti in terms of adobe premiere pro render times as lowers it by like 0.5% or 1% or 2%. It's very, very minimal at the high end of GPUs when it comes to Premiere Pro GPU acceleration. And honestly, it's not a good idea to spend too much to get the highest, highest end. If you're buying new, I would recommend you get something like an RTX 2060 to get video acceleration that is plenty and sufficient, especially if your CPU is in the craziest high-end CPU out there. Uh, chances are you don't need more than RTX 2060 to get most, if not all, of the benefits from video acceleration, uh, video card acceleration from an NVIDIA card or an AMD card. So 
RTX 2060 is my recommendation, but honestly, you can go even lower. And I recommend you just squeeze more budget to the CPU side of things rather than spend more on the GPU. So for example, if you can only get a Ryzen 5 3600X with a, what's it called, a GTX 10, 1660 Ti, I'd rather move the 1660 Ti, get a 1660 or 1650, and then get a Ryzen 7 3700X. So you wanna be spending more on getting a more powerful performance from your CPU rather than emphasizing your budget on the GPU. However, for DaVinci Resolve, because it's so GPU accelerated, you pretty much do what you did with the CPU for Premiere Pro, but now for a GPU. So essentially, spend all your budget as, as much as you can on a GPU. Why? Because you're going to want that GPU acceleration performance. It's so GPU bottleneck DaVinci Resolve that having a decent CPU and then having a beastly GPU is going to be way better than having a decent GPU and a beastly CPU. So it's the reverse of Premiere Pro and the config is going to be completely swapped. So I recommend just getting as good of a GPU as you can get for your rig if you're editing in DaVinci Resolve assuming your other parts still stay decent and your overall rig is still quite balanced so it's not like completely bottlenecked by one thing or the other it's a good idea to spend more for your gpu lowering your export times lowering your import times having better scrubbing in your timeline better transcode times and all that stuff it's very very important to have fast storage medium if you're doing video editing because of all those reasons. Because you're working with large files, you're going to want a fast storage. So that means getting an SSD. Getting a SSD. I have no grammar. Anyway, you want a fast SSD because you need all those benefits, but you can't afford an NVMe or M.2 or PCIe SSD. Well, honestly, you actually don't need that. If getting a SATA SSD means you can get higher capacities and it's you from a reputable brand with good reviews, then go and get these SATA SSDs. From a blind test did by Linus Tech Tips, they actually said that, no, you can't really tell the difference for normal video editing, especially at you know the mid-range low end between SATA, NVMe, and PCIe SSDs. While PCIe SSDs are definitely fast and are a generational improvement, they still aren't that fast in your day-to-day -day average tasks, like video editing, even up to 8K red video. So there's no point in getting an expensive SSD if it means getting less storage just for a higher speed number. Just get a cheap, reputable SSD with good reviews and get as much storage as you can because you're going to need it when you're working with large projects. Assuming you're making 20-30 minute long videos, if you're shooting 4K, that's going to be a lot of gigabytes that you're going to need to store on your computer and unless you want to have that stored on a slow and crappy hard drive you're going to want to get an ssd that's as big as you can afford that is you decently fast so that is my recommendation for storage of course you might still want to have some mass storage hard drives in there and if you do that's fine by me go ahead and install a couple of hard drives in your computer that you like or build like a little nas x just go and build like a little NAS or a separate server for your storage, mass storage needs. But don't use it as your scratch disk because that is going to slow down your workflow so much. Now for the case and power supply and all the other stuff, honestly, this one is completely up to you. For the motherboard, just get one that's compatible, get the features that you need. So if you want to use an M.2 drive, get one that's with M.2 support, obviously. You know, make sure it's got enough RAM slots for the amount of RAM you're using. Make sure it's got good compatibility. Make sure it's got good VRMs so that you can do overclocks or you can ensure that your PC stays reliable. If you are getting a case, make sure it's got good enough airflow for you, make sure it's silent enough for you because if you're a content creator, you want a quiet PC, like my PC is quite quiet, so I'm very proud of it. But your PC might not be quiet enough for you, so go and get a quiet PC case, get a good power supply. I recommend at the very least a 80 plus bronze power supply, if not get it, uh, 80 plus gold power supply. I recommend following Linus Tech Tips forums power supply tier list go and check that out go and google power supply tier list and you usually can find it it's a very good tier list to roughly gauge how the quality of your power supply i'm just going to show off the fact that my power supply is s plus tier so there's that but honestly when it comes to power supply and cases and things it's very subjective on like your needs 
it really depends on you as a consumer so when it comes to those two things i would say go and do your own research as to exactly how much you need and exactly what case you should get okay so we've talked about the pc let's talk about the monitor let's talk about the other stuff as well because you know we have plenty to talk about and I have plenty of spit left. For the monitor, I recommend you get something that is color accurate. You need a color accurate monitor for video editing. It makes your eyes have a better time and also it makes your color grading have a much better time. I do not have particular recommendations because I'm using a Dell Ultrasharp from 2014 so I really don't have that accurate of a monitor when it comes to color. But I recommend that you get the best one you can and you have to do some research on your own part to find out. Uh, for a keyboard, I recommend you don't go with a tiny ass keyboard. It's a mistake that I used to make, but I recently got a TKL keyboard and it's way, way better than when I used a poker size keyboard because you're going to need F keys. You, go, you should really learn your hot keys when it comes to video editing. It's a huge benefit. Get a mouse with a few buttons on it and then you can also put macros on it which I find it super super convenient. So my mouse has zoom in and zoom out as the thumb buttons and when I still used a G502 last time I would have cut button as the thumb button on my mouse so that I could easily access that button. So for video editing I recommend getting some mice with macros functionality and I recommend getting a keyboard that is not too small so that you have F keys and all the other hot keys and commands available to you. So I guess that's it for this video. I hope you found it enjoyable. If you liked and enjoyed it or found it helpful, please like and subscribe. You know the drill. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter so I can get validated by the internet. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.